Now we want to bring in Brian Buckmeyer for more analysis on this. He's an ABC News contributor, a host of the Law and Crime Network, and also a New York City homicide public defender. Brian, uh, the nephew's testimony here seems to be a pretty critical point in this case, whether a Tatiana raised that gun or not. What's some other pieces of evidence that we're expecting to be looking at here? Good morning, Trevor. The other piece of evidence we're expecting here is also this laser sight on the gun. This seems to be the major sticking point for both sides. We heard it in the opening statements where the defense is saying that Aaron Dean saw a laser slight, sight, sorry, a green light from that gun, and that's what caused him to fire back in fear for his life, while the defense is saying that regardless of a laser sight, um, and they're actually arguing that he didn't see it at all, that his actions show that he's lying about this it's going to come down to probably his testimony i think he's going to have to take the stand so this is a pretty high profile case to the point that the defense actually started yesterday's hearing by trying to move it to a different venue and that was denied but they basically said that they wanted it moved because they said almost all the potential jurors during the jury selection had already heard of this case how much can the location here actually affect the trial outcome the location can affect it uh, immensely because you're you're concerned about um, how your community will be affected by a verdict. That's that's one thing that many defense attorneys argue in many of these high-profile cases. Is the jury going to be swayed by a fear of protesting or the community not liking one result or the other? But in a case like this. I'm in New York talking about it. People are in California are talking about it. In Texas, of course, where the case is, no matter where you are, there's going to be some impact and some level of understanding in this case. But that's not what the law says. Law says, can you take that information, put it aside, and only consider the evidence in the law? And that's what appears to what the jury said they can do. And in that fold, this is obviously one of several cases about an officer using lethal force where they're then later put on trial here. But can what we hear during this case be precedent setting in other cases at all? Absolutely, because this is a unique situation where the person is armed with a weapon, but they're doing so legally. They're doing what I believe every person who exercises the Second Amendment would think is correct. You're at home by yourself with a small child. Her nephew was eight years old at the time, and you hear noises outside, and you take out your gun to inspect what happens. But lo and behold, the people who are supposed to call to help us end up shooting and killing us. Now, in this situation, it's odd because should the officer have the ability to shoot and kill when he doesn't announce, doesn't tell the, the, the citizens that he's there, or should the citizens be able to defend themselves? I think this is a complicated question that may be answered not only for this state, but for the entire country. It's a very big but very important question. Brian Buckmeyer, thank you. Always good to talk to you, and we'll follow this case quite closely. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.